It's kit unboxing day. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. It's kit unboxing day and I have one word for you, purple. It'll all make sense once we get into it. There's a lot to share today, so I will stop talking and the kit unboxing and five cards are coming up next. Commence the unboxing. Hmm, look at this little guy. Chipped sapphire. Is that distress embossing glaze? I think it is, but we'll set that there. And get this out of the way. Let's pull everything out. Ooh. Well. Oh my gosh, that's almost blinding. Okay, hold on. Let me get it all arranged for you. Here is the January card kit from Simon Says Stamp, and it is called Don't Flurry, Be Happy. We love a good pun. All right, let's take a look at what we have. We have sugar to keep us going. We have the aforementioned Distress Embossing Glaze, and the color will vary depending on what is popped in your box. I got chipped sapphire. That's really pretty. I, I have not done much with this, but maybe today is the day. You are going to get one clear embossing and watermark ink pad from Simon Says Stamp. This is a really wonderful product. I've used this well, quite a bit. I flip flop between this and Versamark, and this is a really great pad. So if you need a backup or you've never used one, they gotcha. You are going to get this Wee die set. Oh, that's very cute. These are called the Harmony Snowflakes. A little trio of snowflakes. So this is wonderful for winter designs, right? Oh, I do love a snowflake design. All right, we're putting you there. You are going to get the Cheery Snowflakes 3D embossing folder. Now that's a pretty design. Oh, we like that. We like snow. We like snow. Snow's a good backup. All right, putting that there. Oh, what is this? You are going to get some Rainbow Splash Drops and this is new to me. Oh, I like this. Clear, frosted, and iridescent drops. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, now that I love because it's self-adhesive, right? It's very neutral. Those are gorgeous. That must be new. Okay, setting you there. Now this funky, cool thing, I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's going to change the lighting in my whole studio. I'm just going to put it down because that that's dangerous. That is a dangerous shine. You're going to get two USA two sized sheets of this Simon Says Stamp holographic cardstock. So that, oh, there's some things you can do there. All right, I'll put you there. Ooh, what is this? All right, let's look at the paper. Wow, isn't that pretty? That looks like something that I'll never paint, but that is beautiful. All right, let's see. You're going to get six double-sided sheets of the Paper Rose Enchanting Christmas Basics. So let's see. Oh, it's so sad when it's two-sided because, oh no, not really, not on this one. I think that one's a very clear winner right there. Look at that. Oh, wow. That is so pretty. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you're getting micro patterns. You're getting the beautiful winter scene. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's beautiful. That's like that's like Bob Ross on a on a peaceful on a peaceful bender. Those are gorgeous. All right, I'm I'm setting my winter scenes right up front because I I know one of these is going to be a card. All right, that's awesome. I love it. How pretty is that? Winter vibes, people. Winter vibes. Okay, this is the namesake stamp set. It is called Don't Flurry, Be Happy. Let's flip it and reveal. Oh, look at all that snow goodness. Thanks, Snow Much. Miss you, Snow Much. There's snow one. There's snow one. Is there a like you? There's snow one. Your second to, oh, like you, <laughs> I knew it would be there somewhere too. I thought it's just going to be their snow one. Oh my gosh. And look at these are actually big stamps. So this is a pattern stamp. 
This is a stamp, which it's a circle shape, so that would be fabulous just to, you know, make some circles. And if you have a circle die, you just die cut it out. That is really cool. I'm 99% sure this is designed by Christina Warner. What a fun set. Look at all this winter goodness. All right. Now, as it will happen, I must percolate. I must think. I must think about what we're going to make today because at this point, wait, I forgot. <laughs> forgot to talk about the paper. Oh, Kathy. Okay, you're going to get one sheet of Simon Says Stamp Cornflower, 100 pound cardstock. You are going to get one sheet of the Nina Solar White Classic Crest line in 110 pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, talk about missing. Okay, you're going to get one sheet of the Simon St Says Stamp Lavender, and you're going to get a sheet of the of the matte silver. So there we go. Now, now we can percolate. Oh, sometimes it just takes it just takes a little time. It's a little early when I start these in the morning, but now, now we're good to go. First card coming up next. Okay, this box reveal. <laughs> this is not my day. This is an envelope. So you're gonna get one of these and an envelope. Oh, Kathy, you know what? Mama's gonna go fill up the mug. All right, now let me percolate. Cards are coming up next. For the first card, I'm gonna make a snowflake panel. And I wanted to show you why I love having a poke pad because you can poke your piece right in here, okay? I use this. I actually I actually said to Simon says stamp. I said, Simon, can we make a pad, a pokey pad? And they said yes. So that is why I'm showing you this because I've already done some of this in advance because nobody, nobody wants to watch me do this till the cows come home. And we don't really know when the cows come home, but we know when they come home, they just want to be fed. That you know what I mean? They don't wanna, they don't want to watch people poke out of a pokey pad. Actually, it's called the Positively Perfect Craft Pad. But once you get everything out and you still have little tiny pieces, you can just come in here and pop them. And that way your delicate die cuts aren't going to get hurt at all. You know what I mean? You're not gonna bend them, you're just poking like that. And everything pops out. And, I mean, that's a very delicate little friend. Okay, so what I wanna do is create an arrangement, stamp a greeting, and then trim the whole thing down. So let me get set up to stamp. I wanna have a design that's kind of like this, a diagonal. I'm gonna be gluing all of these down and then I think I just want to do a thanks so much. I'm going to focus, I guess, on the greeting first, right? Get the greeting in place. And then the rest of it can be trimmed because I think what's going to have to happen is I am going to place the thanks as soon as I have the snow much stamped. That way you can, you can kind of guarantee that you're going to get it pretty close together. All right. So I'm just setting this little guy right over here. And we're going to say, you can all go now. Come on. I'll figure out my arrangement again, because that is not a difficult one to do. I guess they don't really need to be, you know, they can stay. And then we're going to pick up Snow Much. I'm going to make sure I put this right back where I had it, which is just basically, well, I guess now I can do that. You guys get up there. Just right here on the edge, because I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to see that I had a little area to bleed off if need be. So I'm gonna prime this just a little, right? It's got that coating on it. Every time I work with the kits and a lot of products here on my YouTube channel, they're brand new. That's the only reason I do it is to get that little coating until it kind of looks a little cloudy and then it's ready to take ink. I've got my Simon Says Stamp Anti-Static Powder and the only reason we pop this on is so that where we put our embossing ink, that's where the powder's gonna stick and not to the cardstock. And I do have a little, a little lotion on my hands from earlier before I started filming. So I'm going to be using Simon's Stamp Fine Detail White Powder, but first let's get our ink. Now this is my ink pad that I already have, so same ink, but I'm just gonna be using the one that I have open. 
It's a really nice, it's a really nice embossing ink. All right, and we're just gonna come here and press to transfer. Let it sit for a second, do its thing. And that's what's so great with lighter, um, or not lighter, sometimes when you do this on white, right, you can't see, but if you're doing it on a colored cardstock, you can see where you have stamped. So letting that transfer, and let me grab, oh, that's a little, that's not very damp, hold on. <laughs> Gotta wet you down a little. I'm just going to wipe this up, stick that back on the sheet and grab the thanks. Try not to handle it too much, but here's what's great now is I can actually position that right where I want it, right over the top. Yeah, I think that'll be cute. Okay, again, a little prime. And press with that transfer. I'm gonna hit it one more time. And press. And now all I need to do is add my powder. Let me grab my little piece of pink paper that I like to pour my embossing powder over. I'm gonna grab my embossing clothespin because I don't like my hands to get near the heat. And I'll add the fine detail white powder. Let that sit for a second. Tap a little and let it hit again. And then any area that has a little extra powder that's stuck where I didn't want it, all I need to do is take one of my little brushes here and brush like that. It's just from where I probably grabbed the cardstock. All right, let me put this powder back and then we'll warm up the heat tool and melt the powder. Ooh, that melts so fast, that looks great. So now I have my greeting and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of spray adhesive to the back of my snowflakes, just cause that's gonna be so much faster for me to place them on. So let me get the adhesive and then we'll add them to the panel. When I do use spray adhesive, I always wear a mask and I do not spray anywhere near where I work. I just wanted to point that out because I'm not using this as much lately, but for something like this that is so delicate, it's just going to make it a little easier to get them to stick. Once I have these in place, I'm just gonna take my Teflon bone folder and do a little burnishing to really smooth those out like that. And then I am going to trim this panel down. That way it's really gonna press this into the cardstock. So let me grab my die so we can cut this out. This die will cut a three and three quarter by five inch panel. And so all I have to do is just kind of frame out the greeting, make sure that's straight at the bottom like that. Does that look pretty good? And then it's gonna cut these in. So let me run this through my die cut machine. And now it has pressed everything in really nicely and I have this beautiful panel. Let me pop this onto a white note card and we'll finish out this card. I'll take one of the extra panels here of the Nina Classic Crest Solar White. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter and we're gonna score it right at five and a half for a top folding card. Okay. Fold that down, give that a nice press with the Teflon bone folder and then I'll tape this closed so it stays nice and flat to pop up my panel. So I have some Simon Says Stamp Big Mama tape on the back here and I'll just take 
each of these strips off. Backers. Then I'm just going to pop this down right onto the note card. Excuse my head if it gets in the way. You can see a little frizzy hair coming up there. I think that's good. Isn't that simple? Now here's the thing, we're not done. Let's pull these out because this is new. And I, I really do love clear droplets. And the ones that look, oh gosh, you know what would be beautiful on here is the iridescence. Now, because these are self-adhesive, they're actually pretty easy to use. If you don't like them, right, you could just, oh, come here now. You can just put them off like I could do one in the middle there, like that, get you in there, just to add a little texture, right? But here's the beautiful thing. If I decide, no, no, I don't, I don't like the way this is looking, then all I have to do is take them off. But I think, I actually think it'd be cute to have three going across here and just find, you know, some of the openings in the smaller friends like that. Right? Very cute. I'd like to have five if I can. I think I can. I'm going to put one up here. And because I used that Big Mama foam tape, this dimension is actually really pretty nice. And I bet I could squeeze one more. Uh, I mean, I could put one right in the middle like that. You know what? I'm going to do it. Just like that. Press them down. Now I feel like I should have a, <laughs> see this is, you know what, sometimes, right? Sometimes we keep going because we want to have some repetition. And now because, I, because I've done that and I want to have an odd number, I'm going to take this right here and place this one right at the bottom. Do I have enough room? I do. I do. Now press, 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 press. And that is my finished card project with just a little extra dimension with these fun splash iridescent drops. All right, card one, done. Moving, moving on, or moving, moving on. For the next card, I have to use this little friend here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a crop that makes sure to get, like, although gosh, there's just so much beauty in it, I hate to cut, but, I am going to pull something from my own stash. This is probably my favorite holiday dye of all time, my joyful dye. I want to make sure that I have enough room to have the word joyful. So this is where I don't know. This is why I love dyes like this, because you can crop, right? You can look and say, but I really, I really like the idea of having that sort of offset with enough sky and maybe some of that tree. Then Joyful will just be up here and that's gonna be it. I am going to cut this panel and then I'm gonna cut one slightly larger out of here. So if I go up one like this and then I cut the inside out, I wanna make sure that's, yep, that's enough. Then I'm going to save that cardstock so one can be a mat and one can be my greeting. So let me get all this cut out and we'll start to assemble. Wanted to show you a little tip. Um, I have a couple die cut accidents in my top plate. This is just the Anna Griffin Impress. But most of the time I never cut into my top plate. And one of the reasons is so that I can get nice clean results on my cardstock. So if you ever have an issue where you're like, gosh, my cardstock is just so mucked up, try to keep one plate in your sandwich always clean. You could flip it every time, but have that be the top and have, well, I cut into this mat, but you can see my plate below is the messy plat, the messy plate. So I just wanted to show you that because now I have this beautiful panel that I can go ahead and cut joyful out of. I'm also going to cut a few extras out of some white cardstock for some dimension. But now I have this beautiful
mat and nothing is wasted except that cute pattern. All right, let me get this cut and get some white layers glued on the back of that and then we'll build out the card. Thought I'd show you real quick. Most of the time when I have easy little die cuts like this, and I consider this easy, I just, I've been using liquid glue. I like the liquid glue because it lets you wiggle and get things into place. And this is just very easy to dot on my glue. This is Connect Glue from Gina K. And I just, you know, work my way around like that. Little dots, little dots will do ya. And I always, I keep this pink paper, which you see in a lot of my videos. It could change color, it just depends. I just buy the cheapest copy paper I can find. Cause sometimes I just hate the idea that I'm going to get glue all over my work surface. And when you have a white work surface, you don't see it. And then all of a sudden you're sticking to something and you're like, what's that? So that's why I like to do it on paper. All right, so again, just wiggle into place and then I will take and put a brick on it press and I will proceed with gluing the rest of the layer, the shiny layer on top. Next, I'm going to add just a light liquid glue here. I don't want it to ooze out. I just want to have a little bead running here so that I can glue this onto my frame, my little my little mat frame. And that will that should be enough to hold it because it doesn't need much, right? But again, this way I can place you down right on the thing with the deal. Oh, that was a little messy, but I can wipe it. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna wipe that off. And now I'm gonna have this pretty little frame. Let me add some foam tape to the back and then we will pop this onto our note card. All right, I've got three strips on here and I'm just gonna Pop this onto another white note card. Forgive that head of mine. Oh, it looks, it looks like a picture frame. I wish I had painted that, but here's the good news. You don't have to. Let's add the greeting. All right, now I, I'm just going to put it up there. I, I think this is so elegant and so simple. So here we go. I'll just take a little liquid glue again all over the back, little dots. Okay, now I don't think it's gonna be hard for me to get this even, but you know, sometimes like it's hard when you have the little dippy downs, the ascent, these are called descenders and the parts that go up are called ascenders. And sometimes I feel like I just need my fingers for this side to side. Drop it down. And then the best I can do is to say, I'm gonna look at the under letters, the baseline as it's called, and just make sure the baseline is even. If the baseline is even, we're probably good. Press that down to let it adhere. And then of course, don't forget, don't forget the tittle. The tittle, of course, is the dots over the I's or the J's. And here it's just much easier to build. Oh, come here with this uh, right onto the panel. So you can use any sort of pickup tool. I love the pierce and place wand because it's really good at picking up little tiny things. Not big things, but uh, confetti sequins this is great for and also make sure you're going on the right side you know you want the curvy side of your die cut down right going like that not flipped up and then again this just sort of wiggles into place and we put the last bead on and I'm not adding anything else to this I think this is so beautiful again die cut not from the kit, of course. I just, I knew as soon as I saw this that I wanted to have this joyful die cut with the matte silver from the kit. And that's the finished card. Isn't that pretty? I did nothing. I really did nothing. Oh gosh, I love pattern paper sometimes. All right, I'm gonna go have another cup of coffee to get really jacked up 
and we'll be back with another card. For the next card, I want to use my embossing folder, but I want to ink blend first. So I, I think I think we're on a purple, we're on a purple train right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get off that train, but let's, let's see what happens. I'm going to just run my brush over my paper towel. That's how I clean my brushes. And you know what? It works great. Just gets it. Mostly everything that was on is off. And let's just start with some Simon Says Stamp Lilac. This is the positively saturated ink and just start blending. Now I have my paper held with a waffle flower grip mat. And I really love these because they just, you know, you don't have to put your hands on anything. It's a nice way to hold something down. And I'm just trying to create a panel of color. So that's all we're doing here. I love it. I think that's very pretty. I don't think much else is needed. So let me wipe my mat down and we'll grab my die cut machine and the folder. I'm going to bring in my Gina K Designs intricut machine. But first, I'm going to show you the setting that I'm going to use for this. I am going to turn the, uh, let's see here if you can see that. I'm going to turn to the 3D emboss and that will get one setting ready. But then on the twist, I am gonna set that down to about a minus three. Now, I, you can play around with this type of adjustable machine. I actually learned this from watching a video from my friend Jennifer McGuire, and I will link that, that, well, that video blog post, actually. Um, she's got a great resource for anyone who has this machine and wants to know what the settings are. So here I'm going to take my platform and now here's where you want to make sure if you're using a 3D embossing folder, you want the nubby side to be underneath so it will push the design up into your project. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to even wet this down. I know you can like on the back side, but I'm just going to roll the dice and see what we get. All right. So I'm going to put it fold first and make sure that I've got enough pressure. Actually, did I change that? Let's, let's look over here and let's run it through. Let's it's tight enough. I may have to do it a little tighter to come back through. Let's see, I think I'm gonna do it a little tighter. I know it's gonna give me what I'm looking for, but I'm going to go, forgive my head, I'm gonna dial it a little bit more. There we go, all right. And I'm not using the cutting plate, okay? This is just the platform. No cutting plate in here. Okay. And let's take a look at the texture. Oh, it's very, very cool. Look at that. See that beautiful texture that's in there? All right. Let's move on. And now I'm gonna take a little sanding block here, which I learned about recently. And I'm just gonna sand over to bring out the snowflake pattern. And look how it just sort of starts to come alive. It's so fun, I love this. All right. Look at how fun that is. Now I'll just wipe away all that extra paper. I keep a Swiffer cloth for just about everything. And now I have a panel that I can use. Now here's the thing too, if you wanted to, you could just run a white pad over that, but I feel like sanding is a whole new world for me. And I just think that is so beautiful. So now I have to come up with a greeting and figure out the rest of the card. I actually have an idea famous last words, right? I want to do, uh, we'll go like there's snow one here. And what I'm going to do, and I don't know how this is going to work. I pulled out the same colors 
in the smaller cubes and I'll show you why. I'm going to work my way down and create a blended greeting. And we're going to start at the top with lilac. So I'm going to ink that up, get it on there. But then I'm going to take a brush, just kind of tap it, right? Just kind of tap it to kind of create a smooth look. Press, and that's layer one. And I can do it again, right? So we get that up there. And again, tap, 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 tap. Because I think it would look really cute to have this sort of gradient look coming down. So I'm not going to clean this. I'm going to move into the next color. And that's going to be the orchid. So there you can see the line, right? And then all you're going to do is tap that line. Soften it. And because you have this tool like the Misty, you are able to stamp in exactly the same place, right? And it's so cool. Oh, love it so much. And that way, you're gonna get that look that's gonna be a little more gradient. And here, I'm gonna do it one more time just to make sure we are much darker at the base, okay? Like that. So that's the top. Now I'll bring in the like you. It's just nice to be able to do them separately because here I'm not embossing, I'm not doing anything too fancy, but I like that. And I can even overlap it a little. And that would be cool because I want it to be connected to the greeting, right? Like that. That's fun. Am I straight though? I think that looks pretty straight. Or it could just be purposefully a little angled. That's kind of cute too. I'm not sure if I'm going to fussy cut this or if I am going to just use some sort of a shape die to cut it out. I don't know. We'll see. Now here I can take my violet on the bottom, right? Like that. And again, I'm going to take a little orchid up top like that, so we get a little bit of that coming in. We'll tap it and we'll see what happens. Oh, I think I missed part of my E, so I'm gonna do that too. Let's get that E in there, just a little bit here at the top. Like that. See how you can create that sort of two-toned look? It's fun, and I don't really do this enough, just doing fun stamping techniques, right? Let's just go in here like that. And again, we'll just soften a little until it gets how we want it to look. I mean, it's very, it's very cool to do that. I love it. All right, and I think that's good enough unless I wanna have, actually, let me add a little more to the base letters just so that they're nicely filled in. Like that. Yeah, that looks great, funky and fun. All right, I'm going to get cleaned up here and then I'm going to come up with a way to cut this to put this onto my panel. I'm going to pull, and this is where I pull from my stash, I'm going to pull a couple shape dies here. This is a rectangle with a stitch and then this also has a stitch and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out because I think I'm just going to have it be, although, what if I turned it into like a Oh, what do you call it? A little banner. Oh, I could do that too. Sometimes I gotta think out loud and then we make the card. Let me start cutting and I'll show you the results of the cuts. I popped this on to a white note card and then I used that other die to create a panel. See, sometimes if you don't have the dies for something to cut out a greeting, you can always just use a shape die, right? Because I think, I think that's really cute and I have a plan for the top. But what I'm gonna do first is just going to put a little stripe of liquid glue so I have a little float time here. And where's my ruler? This is where a ruler can be handy, but I feel like I feel like I can place this. Let me stand up over it. Again, I have to look straight down. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and if I bring this in real quick, 
butt it up against. I think that's straight. Straight enough. Look at how pretty that is. So you've got your blend and it goes right down into the dark. And then all I'm going to do is just have a snowflake that's layered up here. So I'll have one here like that. Let me get my tweezers. And I'll just put little, little beads of glue around the snowflake. And I do like, I like it to be a little more like that. And then press that. And then I'm just going to layer one more little friend right on top. But really the place this needs to be, the glue, it just needs to be kind of around the center because it's, these little prongs are going to offset. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let that get a little tacky and then line up that circle right on top of the other like that. And then I'm going to let that adhere. And then I think while I'm here, because I'm in Rome, this is a little involved. I'm going to put one little jewel right in the center because I don't think that would be bad. Then you get this cute little layered snowflake and I can take, I think, one of the iridescent ones yep, and pop that right smack dab in the center like that. And that's my finished card project. I actually think that's really fun. Stamping, blending, sanding, embossing. Okay, now I really need to go take a nap. All right, moving on. Because I'm on a purple bender here, I do not want to waste this paper. And so I am going to cut some strips and make a strip card, I think, and turn it into an ornament. Now, it does. I want to have some strips that are a little wider. So I don't even know, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna take a couple of those. Uh, same thing over here. Might take that maybe there. And that guy. And I wanna keep these together so that I know, no, not like that, so that I know how they go and how they go. Then I'll just take, this panel and do like, I don't know, a couple quarter inch, maybe a half inch, right? Same thing here. And all of these scraps can be saved, right? I'll just keep my papers like that. And I think for the wood grain, I want to go this way. So again, let's just go quarter inches. And if I need more, I'll get more. But we're gonna start here with all of these strips. Oh, look at that cute on the back. I didn't realize how cute that was. Let me get a piece of lightweight paper so that we can start gluing these on. I have a piece of 80 pound cardstock here. This is the Nina. And I am just gonna add some tape runner and I'm going to do this in a very straight pattern, so I'm going to speed this up, put on some frosty music, and we will add our strips. So now I have this panel that kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but it's not going to for long. I am going to cut off the little excess, right? Because I don't need those. Don't need those. That's fine too. I guess these can hang as they will. Because now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a shape die and cut a shape. So let me find one that I think will be cute. I've got a die set that I've had for a very long time. This is a little ornament set. And because I want to do this for my card project, I am going to just center it right about there. And that way we get a little bit of 
winter in there. So let me run that through my die cut machine. And then I'm also gonna cut a little silver topper and maybe a bow, not sure yet about that, out of the matte silver cardstock. So check it out. I took a panel and ran it through the embossing folder. So I'm tilting it so you can see how it catches the light. And I put some foam squares on here. And I'm going to stamp, don't flurry, be happy. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it on a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to emboss it in silver. So let's get our Simon embossing ink. Right, ink that up. Don't flurry, be happy. You know you you know you want to like sing that song. I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to get a copyright strike for not having the legal rights to sing it, but you can sing it. You can sing it at home and uh, don't flurry, be happy. All right, I think that'll be good. Let me grab my Simon Says Stamp Silver Embossing Powder. And we'll put this ultra fine silver on here. And let that come off. Oh, I think that's gonna be very cute. Don't flurry, be happy. All right, and let me get this back in the jar and we'll melt that powder. All right, now I have my little don't flurry, be happy. I'm gonna go ahead and use a Simon Says Stamp sentiment label die to cut that out. Just get that sentiment label die lined up and run that through. I actually cut two strips just to give this a little more heft. And even though I'm not gonna use the whole strip, I'm just gonna glue that together with a little liquid glue and let that set up so that my greeting feels substantial. Press that like that and press. And then I'm just gonna trim off from side to side. I want to finish this off by cutting this to be perfectly shaped for the card front. So I think what I need to make sure though <laughs> is that it's straight in here. I'm actually gonna take a little tape just so I know exactly where I wanted it to go across and then I'll make it nice and straight on the mat. But then when I cut this out, it'll have a nice rounded edge and it'll pop right on here. Let me go cut that out and we can finish out the card. I could pop it up, but I, I feel like this is already popped up. I don't think it needs to be, meaning this is the ornament is popped up. But all we have to do is find where it goes across and the perfect fit, slide that down just put it right until it lines up perfectly like that. It's so cute. I have my Simon Says Stamp foam squares here. I am gonna do a little dollop, a little bead in each guy like that. Then let's get all of you friends out of the way. Then I'm just gonna place this right in the center of my embossed panel and hopefully make it nice and straight. I think that looks pretty good like that. And you know what? That is my finished card project. I think that is so cute. Oh yeah, I did already stamp the back because that's what I do. <laughs> I think that is so fun. It's just really cool with the different strips and that way I used almost all of the paper from this piece. So waste not, want not when you have a gorgeous piece and look at how the continuation jumps with that little strip. I love it. We're really on a lavender roll. All right, let's do one more card. For the next card, I am going to do something with the Distress Embossing Glaze that I got in my package. Now, I don't know what this is going to be. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Actually, you know what? You gotta pick that up. Let's pop it down here, right up against it. All right, but I do want to use, see, this is what I wonder. Do I wanna do a big circle and then I could cut that out? Oh boy, hmm. Or I just think, oh, 
I think that is just beautiful. Now let's use that one because look at, look at how big it is. I'm going to have it be a little bit right like that. Get this picked up. I will prime it, give it a good rub with the hands, and then we're going to stamp down our embossing ink. I am going to powder this up a bit because I want to have as little static on here as possible. I'm going to ink this up really well. I'm going to bring this down and I am going to grab my little pressure tool here. Just allows me to evenly press. Now this would be beautiful to try with any embossing powder. I just thought it'd be fun to get the glaze and maybe do a little ink blend. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. And again, there's different embossing glazes that come. But here's the fun thing about kits. When you get things, sometimes they're things you haven't tried before. And in my case, <laughs> that would be this today. I've used embossing glazes a few times. Let's see how good of a, tra oh, that's a great transfer. Um, but I don't even think I have anything on my channel where I've done it. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't done it all. All right, let me grab my little pink paper. Open up the embossing glaze. All right, and this is chipped sapphire, right? And I do have this, oh, it's very blue. It's much, oh yeah, you know what? I may have to bust out some other inks. We'll see. Let's see what it looks like. It's sticking, sticking to the pattern. I'll practically do my whole jar out here. And now, oh my, whoa, whoa, that, it, I didn't expect it to look that dark. I know I probably should have, right? All right, let's just let it go again. Wow, okay. And again, I know this is translucent, right? I know it's not gonna be quite this color, but let's, Funnel it back in carefully, like that, just like any other embossing powder. And now I'm going to bring in my brush because I just want to clean this off. I mean, this is, um, I think, where I was handling this. I could have powdered it more. Okay, like that. Get my heat tool warmed up and we'll melt this glaze. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> the color is so great. And there's like a cool, see the shine on that? Oh my gosh. Okay, I want to see if I melted it all. Wow, that looks great. Now down here, it's a little messier. And that's okay because I think... I'm going to trim this, but you know what I might do? I might have to grab some other inks and maybe I still can bring in purples. Hold tight. I'm going to bring some color in here knowing that I'm going to be trimming this and also that this is going to resist because it's just, it's, it's a glaze. It's going to resist. Now, I don't know what would have happened if I would have done this on top of this, like if I would have stamped and embossed on the top, I mean, who knows? But this is so pretty, just like this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So really, what if I just lightly, 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 lightly here, just really keep it light with whatever's on the brush, like that, right? Coming down a little bit in here so that it's just a very soft burst. Well, not a burst, but you know what I mean. It's coming out like that. Then I can take this, if any gathers on here, and if I want, and I want, I'm going to add just a little bit more depth right to where I'm gonna cut it, and that will be on the edge. It's not gonna be, uh, I'm gonna keep it more out here, like this. And then I'm gonna trim it so it has a little bit of the darker on the side. And 
actually, if I wanted to be really funky, I could bring in one more color. I'm gonna bring in Iris, which really does tend more towards blue, but I'm gonna use, I mean, it's part of that. I'm gonna just put it right here on the edge. Just kind of blend. Wipe any excess off and let me get a die so we can trim this down. Actually, I think I'm gonna wet my brush down here. Get a little like that. I think I'm just gonna do a like a little bit of water reactivity over here because I think that would add something pretty and extra layered. Oh, look at that reaction. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, okay. A little up here too. Yeah, that is just the right amount. Cause I was thinking snow would be pretty on there, but you know what? I don't wanna put snow on top. So I am just gonna let that do its water reaction thing. Oh, love it. All right, then I'll cut it out. I went ahead and stamped thanks so much here on this little circle, or on this piece of cardstock, and I'm gonna cut it out with the Simon Says Stamp nested circle dies. All right, so now I have a little circle, and I'm gonna ink blend on that, but I'm also, now that this is dry, I'll cut this out with a little panel die, three and three quarter by five, and I do want this to be open at the bottom like that, so we'll go We'll go with that crop, all right? And this will help to flatten it out as I run it through. I think I'm gonna use smaller brushes here. I just grabbed the cubes because they're little and they're cute. And we'll see, right? I've got all these colors, so all I really wanna do is just bring in a little around the edges, right? To kind of create a matchy-matchy look for this as well. And then again, you just wipe it off the greeting text. So now we're starting to create something that matches a little better. Now, actually, I could have done that, the snow much in the uh, embossing glaze as well, but I think this will really pop. So let's bring this in as well. And this is that violet. Now this is much darker, so I'm gonna come at it a little bit a little bit lighter there. Oh, that's coming in way darker than I thought it would, but that's okay. That's all right. It's gonna be very glowy on the edges. Glowy, glowy. Okay, so we're getting that glow all the way around. You know, part of me thinks I should have done it with the blue, with the chap, chapped, <laughs> with the chapped, <laughs> with the chapped chip fire, <laughs> chapped. Sapphire. I don't think that's what Tim, although you know what though? Let me let that dry for a second because that's kind of cool. Okay, I changed my mind. I did this because I do love the look of this glaze and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut this one too and I'm just gonna see what does this look like? Is this really cool? Is the other one cooler? <laughs> it's hard to know. I gotta get my, I gotta get my snow much centered and I'll go ahead and cut that out. Let's just see, okay? I'm gonna take my bigger brush here for the for the lighter all the way around, right? I'm gonna keep it as light in the center as I can. That way, it will always have a bit of a glow, you know? So we'll go in there like that. And there's your, there's your light lilac, okay? We'll come in with some orchid. And that way, I think it's gonna match better, you know? I think that's pretty, but I think it's a little stark. And now, get that distributed in my bristles. Go around. And I didn't wanna have it, you know, fade to white. I could have done that on one side, but I think having it all the way around is kinda cute. Okay, but it still stays glowy in the center just by, you know, leaving the ink out. And the last little bit, we will bring in the violet, remembering what a firecracker this is though. And so for this, see, it's not just about tapping off. Sometimes it's about distributing in the bristles so that it's not quite coming in as hot 
And then here, of course, you can start way off on the edge and just sweep in like that. I kind of like that actually. Just kind of sweep it in. A little bit of water, pick it up, and then just tap on those little guys. Come on now, get in there. There'll be a few. Oh, there we go. There we go. That way I have sort of a matchy matchy reaction, which you can see that start to happen. All right, I had a last minute change. I decided to make a horizontal card. I actually think this would be very cute here too, but I did something else. I'm going to save these. I think they're cute. I actually grabbed a scrap of soft navy cardstock and stamped your second to snow one. And I'm just going to pop it right here. I think that's a better look. You know, sometimes when you edit, when you say to yourself, how can I make it simpler? That, that's what I think of when I think of how can I edit what I'm doing? It is it's sometimes taking some things away. <laughs> kind of like my husband said in the video where he was attempting to quote, uh, well, I guess it's he was trying to quote Charles Mingus, but uh, I think it was actually St. Antoine de Exbury who said, perfection is achieved not when something there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing more to take away. And then he made a joke about heroin. But you know, I'll link that video if you haven't seen it, but please just remember my husband doesn't have a clue about what I do, but that's okay. Anyway, sometimes it's what you take away and taking away a larger circle and placing down something like this. I think this is a better option. So I'm going to split right there. I'm going to butt up against. And as soon as I think I'm in the right place, I'll bring my ruler up and we press down so that our T-square gives us that straight line like that. And I chose a little scrap of cardstock that wasn't in the kit just because it looked so close to the chipped sapphire. Now, should we add a little shine on here? We certainly could. And on this one, I mean, I could, I wonder if, if no, I don't like the chalky ones for this. I think, let me get my pick. Again, we could do a similar thing where maybe we take a larger clear. Let's see what the clears look like. I do love a clear right in there, okay? Because the, oh gosh, that is really pretty. The clear, not the uh, iridescence, they kind of uh, do their own thing too. Oh, look at that. What side is the sticky side? Just to have three like that. Get that over a little and press. So now you have one in the center there and there. And that could be the finished card. Now I could go one, two, three, you know, yeah, I will. Okay. I love these little self-adhesive press. And I'm going to do one more right up there. Okay. That, that I love. And that's the finished card project. <laughs> it took a while. This one might be the longest. This is why we're only doing five today. I think after I did this, I, I was done, but I, Love that stamp so much. I think there is so much you could do with it. And I'm also really happy with how this Distress Glaze. Again, you'll get a different, it, de it depends on what kit you get. I got the chipped sapphire, but of course it will depend on what shows up in your door. But again, don't be afraid to play with something you've never played with before because you might just make something you love. All right, let's take a look at all of my very purpley cards. So here's a look at the final cards. Now, when I set out to do these unboxings, I never know what is going to end up, right? I love these so much. <laughs> like, I love all of them. I, I Let's start here. Okay, we have our first one where all I did was take a series of die cuts, stamp a greeting, run it well and I ran this through so it presses those into the cardstock added a few self-adhesive gems lavender white good to go all right love that so simple and so easy to do but this this is just like I'm I'm not gonna send this to anyone I'm gonna keep this 
in my studio and just admire that pattern paper. I mean, that pattern paper, look, it's just, and yes, I did pull something, a die from outside of the kit. So the die joyful is not part of the kit, but I, I knew what I had to do. And I love that here. Okay. We, we had some fun with the embossing folder and again, doing that ink blend, the 3d emboss, and then sanding it to, to make that pattern pop. And then I did a gradient stamping. There's no one like you and stacked a couple more of those lovely little snowflakes and put a gem in the center. Then on here, we just did the old classic, use your leftovers, right? Strip them out, cut a shape. I just, and any shape would work to make an ornament or a circle. I just pulled something from outside of the kit. Again, I just really wanted to have one big ornament that said, don't flurry, be happy. And then of course we have that beautiful embossed texture from the embossing folder from the kit. And last but not least, the one that took a while to get there, I actually really like this one too. I, I feel like a broken record, but this shocked me. I did not think that the Distress Embossing Glaze would have that much of a thicker, more solid opacity, if that makes sense. I thought it would be much more see-through but because it's a dark color on light cardstock, I think that's how that turned out. And again, the purples, it just, it, the lavender was in the kit, these papers, it just informed the whole feel of these. So those are the finished card projects for the January 2024 kit. I hope this inspires you to consider becoming a subscriber to the Simon Says Stamp card kit. If you do, you get this box of goodness delivered to your doorstep every month. There is no long-term commitment. You can cancel at any time, but it's really fun to get all these products that have been curated and put together and you just get to play. I will have all of the products that I use today in addition to the kit linked over on my blog. I will have a blog post link so you can check that out if you want to see everything that I used. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. If you like kit unboxings, check out these two most recent ones and watch a kit turn into multiple cards in each video session.